Here's how to read an oil analysis report. I'm Lake Speed Jr., a certified lubrication specialist and oil analyst, so I'm gonna help you understand how to read that oil analysis report. That way, you get the most benefit from your results. Your engine is talking. Used oil analysis helps you listen. The most important thing with any oil is viscosity. The first thing to look at is the viscosity rating of the oil. If it's a 50 grade or supposed to be a 50 grade, well, it should be between 16.5 and 21.9 centistokes at 100 degrees Celsius. So knowing whether or not your oil is still in grade is the first thing to look for. So once you've looked at the viscosity, then you want to look at the oxidation value. That's the chemical aging of the oil. So if you started off with a mineral oil, you're probably going to have an oxidation value less than 10. Now, if the oxidation value goes upwards of 30 or 40, that's an indication that the oil is at the end of its life. It's aged out and should be changed. Now, the next thing we want to look at is fuel dilution. Fuel dilution, I mean, that's the biggest issue we see. Nine times out of 10, when we see a problem with the oil, high wear metals, something like that, there's high fuel dilution going along with it. So you wanna look at that fuel dilution and see where you are. Less than 2% is a good number. Over two, we've got problems you need to investigate, you need to solve that before bigger problems show up. The next contaminant to look for is water and glycol. Both are elements of coolant. So if you got a head gasket leak or something like that, this is where it's gonna show up. Then also potassium can show up as an element, an additive essentially in those coolants. So you wanna look at that and make sure there's no contamination going on. The next thing is gonna be silicon. Now, this is tricky. All oils typically have some silicon in them because silicon is an anti-foam additive and you want your oil having a little bit of that so it doesn't foam up too much. But typically that's gonna be less than 20 parts per million. So once you see silicon levels above 20 parts per million, that can be atmospheric dust or dirt or sand, things you don't want. Or let's say you have a Alucil cylinder engine from a, say a Porsche or an uh, Audi or BMW Alucil cylinders have silicon impregnated in them. High levels of silicon can be an indication of bore scoring in one of those engines. So that's a thing to look for as well. And then we're gonna get into our additive package. These are the things that are added to the oil to enhance the properties of the oil. These are things like detergents, like calcium, sodium, magnesium, but you also have anti-wear additives like zinc and phosphorus, but you also have uh, friction modifiers like moly and boron. So this is where you're gonna see the additive package in the oil looking through theirs. So that's gonna be a key indication of knowing what's going on. A great thing to do is to know what new oil values are of your oil and compare them to the used oil values that show up in this section. Usually before an engine shows signs of distress in terms of wear metals, you'll see additive consumption, especially of the phosphorus. That means that oil is doing everything it can to try to save the engine and prevent catastrophic wear. So it's gonna be seeing that consumption of the additive when that's happening. So a consumption of phosphorus is using an indication that something bad is about to happen. A good time to investigate, a good reason to be seeing what those additive levels are. The next thing is gonna be the equipment health section. These are all the wear metals. So that's gonna be iron, chromium, copper, tin, lead, aluminum, manganese, titanium, vanadium. These are all different elements that can be in the different steels and irons, bushings, you know, bronze type components in the engine. So typically like an iron-based cylinder is gonna have a higher level of iron, Piston rings are usually corroded with some type of chrome or molybdenum. So this is where that chromium can indicate if there's piston ring wear. Again, iron can be camshafts as well as cylinder bore. So you wanna keep that iron level low the best you can. Copper, tin, lead, typical bearing materials. And then aluminum, a piston material, also can be a bearing material in newer 
style bearings in the newer late model vehicle. So you want to keep an eye on all of these wear metals. Now the more unfrequent wear metals are going to be manganese. Typically that's going to be a fuel additive. So if you're using an octane booster, you're probably going to see it show up here. Manganese can sometimes be in valve guides, but typically we're going to see manganese showing up as a result of using an octane booster that contains manganese. Titanium can be either a wear metal from say a retainer of a spring, typically in race engines, but it can also be an additive in modern oil. So sometimes new oils now contain a little bit of titanium as a friction reducer. So we got to look at that value. And then vanadium is an alloying agent that's also used sometimes in things like crankshafts. So we want to keep an eye on all those wear metals. Then you want to do is look at that total amount of wear per thousand miles. So for street cars, track cars that see a lot of miles, this is how you want to normalize the wear metals and see, okay, what's going on because the individual numbers themselves tell you one thing but the bigger picture the better clearer picture is taking them as a whole normalizing that and getting that wear rate and looking at that wear rate over time that trend analysis is really going to be the key to knowing the health of your engine that way you can get the most longevity out of your engine hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching